Hello and welcome to the Pacific Coast Auto YouTube channel. My name is Derek Weldon and we're going to be doing a vehicle review of this 2002 Toyota Noah. This one here, the front wheel drive version, seven seater interior minivan. This is kind of a compact minivan here in Japan. It's a great size for people who want the utility of a van but want the kind of driving dynamics of a car. I think these are great vans I've, and uh, this one seems to be in really good condition so this was bought from auction here in japan is going to be exported to canada the engine is a 2000 cc engine engine runs well in the video you'll hear it clicking that's the sound of the injectors it sounds like all the other noahs or voxies that we have exported voxie is the uh other version of this car and japan does a weird thing where they'll have two exact identical versions of the same car with maybe a little bit of trim that's different and then they'll call one of them one name and one of them another and then sell them at different uh, dealerships kind of a weird thing they've been doing it ever since like the 70s maybe even earlier than that okay so i'm going to lower the hood here now the coolant in this one needs to be changed really soon the oil seems to be okay but we don't know the last time it was changed so it's a good idea to get that one changed Give a quick peek of the car and then we'll go over the inspection sheet. Look at this. This pull here is for showing you how far you are away from the curb because the steering wheel is on the other side there. And so it's a little bit hard to see exactly where your bumper is. So it gives you a little pull and that's retractable. Very cool little option there. And check this out. The front of the car has a nipple. <laughs> and it's a camera on a 2002. This is front and rear clearance cameras. And I think because it's like a tall boy design, you sit up pretty high in these and you can't see an awful lot of what's in front of you, especially what's in front of your bumper. And so this is the version of the car that does not run over dogs. And that's great for dog lovers. Okay, so uh, auction sheet here. Let's go over this. I'm going to translate this. Okay. This one here says 70,000 yen is the max reserve price on any of the vehicles that are in this section. 2002 NOAA XV Selection. This is an auction grade 4 with an interior B, 95, 6, 86 kilometers, automatic transmission, power steering, power windows, Navi, and airbag. That's Japanese Navi, but it comes, like Toyota was smart, they put them in a dual DIN size uh, place. So if you want to take that Navi out and then put in a different Navi to update it, uh, you can do that. Okay, so original silver color. It says reverse camera, toll collection box, and uh, HID headlights. Let's have a look at those headlights. Lenses are a little bit cloudy. But I turned them on because headlights and fog lights are cool. <laughs> and that's basically the only reason. Okay, so uh, interior wear, dirty, and cigarette burn. There's actually two of them on the seat. And I got a picture of that in the picture report. Uh, seat wear and dented. I didn't notice any dent in the seat. I sat in it and it felt like a very normal seat. Uh, wheel hubcaps are missing. And it's true. They just look like gangster black wheels. So probably need to be, uh, I don't know. You can buy hubcaps. Hubcaps are fairly universal. Uh, or change the wheels to some rocking 20-inch uh, deep dish wheels. And it's a Japanese thing to do that kind of thing. Uh, hot minivans in Japan is a big deal. Okay, spare tire house is scratched and dented. Somebody backed into like some sort of a curb or something. Paint fade on the front, on the hood, and on the roof. Now, it's actually not that bad. On the front grill, I got another video showing just that paint fade. Apparently, there's some here. I don't notice it and then there's some on the roof as well but the roof is up really high and so nobody's ever going to be spying your roof and if there is somebody spying your roof that person probably needs to find better hobby than to go around looking at people's roofs here's my eye level i'm five foot ten that's exactly what i can see in real life okay 178 centimeters in case you do real uh, measurements okay already kind of went over that went over that big scratches on the rear bumper here and then the body has several small scratches and small dents i got another video specifically showing those none of them are really big enough to show in this video and so for all intents and purposes this is an eight and a half or nine out of ten condition body and so really nice looking I'm using the wrong lens today, so I have to stand further away from the car than I normally would. But I'm getting tired of using the little lens because, uh, I don't know, I'm OCD about things. Okay, I think that the, the car is pretty modern looking. If this car came out today, nobody would bat an eye at it. It's, uh, well, I guess, I guess in the last year or two years, 
and this is 2017 for all of you future viewers. In the last year or two years, cars have started to get a little bit more pronounced looking, but this car holds its own. It doesn't look dated at all. Headlights are nice and big. Tail lights have kind of the, uh, the transparent lens look that is still used on most headlights these days. I guess the only thing that this one doesn't have that the new cars have, I'm noticing all these new cars have these signals that instead of blinking the signal on and off, like all cars have done for 100 years, they go brrp, 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 and it drives me crazy. Every time I see one of those, I'm like, why doesn't my car have that? Oh, I want to buy a new car. And so, and then I kick myself in the butt and, and tell myself that I don't need a new car. In fact, if you're watching this channel regularly, you just noticed that I did buy a new car. The new car is almost the exact same age as I am, so not really a new car, but new to me. Okay, so front end looks pretty good. It is getting dark, and so you're not going to be able to see everything. I'm sorry, but uh, when I shot the rest of the report, it wasn't as dark as it is here, and I got pictures of all of the damage. If there is any, there really isn't much. Condition of this one's great. Really, the, the worst scratch is on the back you got here. This is an A2. Okay, and then some loading scratches, which is typical for minivan life, especially child minivan life. Now, I think that this is a great vehicle for children. You get dual sliding doors, and so you can get out from both sides. You can pack seven kids. Seven, <laughs> seven kids only if a kid is driving. Pardon me, you can pack one adult and, seven, and six kids. That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, but it's possible. Okay, lots of cubbies in this one cubbies are cool I had a friend in high school who named his dog cubby and then we used to always call it jumper and for some reason he used to get so mad at us calling his dog jumper even though its name was cubby and thinking back of it back to it it's kind of funny that he named his his dog cubby because cubby is like a place that you put things and you can't really put things in a dog hmm Okay, so uh, back to real life. We got good condition uh, seats, all except for two cigarette burns right here and here. They don't go all the way through the fabric, so they're not that bad. See, this is the problem with this lens, is it's not fast and it'll search for, um, search for the focus worse than other ones. Okay, center gauges, which are, center gauges are a little bit weird. You get used to them once they're your car, but when you drive someone else's car that has center gauges, at first it's a little bit strange. The gauge set in here is nice. I like how thin and small it is. And I like how modern the dashboard looks. Especially the controls are very simple. I hate controls that are overly complicated. When I'm driving, I want everything to be very easy to do. And this is one of the problems that I have with my personal van. Outside 17 degrees right now. Okay, so we got this. Here's one of your cubbies or your jumpers. You get more cubby down here. This is the toll collection box. More cubby. Okay. This one and this one. That's cool. And something here that's really weird for a Japanese car. It's like a place that you can stick a two liter bottle of stuff, but you can't buy a two liter bottle of stuff in Japan. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> voice crack. I'm hitting puberty <coughs> as we speak. Okay, but uh, you can buy a 1.5 liter bottle because nobody in Japan has a fridge big enough to put anything in it. It's really crazy how small the fridges are here. Okay, on to the back, and I'm going to show you the most fun flipping seat you've ever seen in your life. I'm trying to make this video interesting as interesting as a minivan video can be. Somebody commented that my, I, w I sounded like I was bored in my last video. It was just because I was extremely sick and you could probably hear it in my voice today. Okay, so you get the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm a liar. There's eight seats in this. Even better, now the seventh person doesn't have to be a kid driving the car. Okay, so you want to get into the back and you don't want a Superman in. So easy solution to that, watch. Ready? That's fun. It's way funner than it looks. It's like watching an action movie, right? And then you see all these people running around shooting each other. If you were doing that in real life, 
you betcha the adrenaline will be pumping. But if you just watch it, you'll be like, yeah, whatever, that guy's going to get shot. Here we go. I'll watch this. So easy. So the back seats are flip to the side style. If you need to use this area for cargo, uh, I've said this a million times in these videos, but the back slips, flips it down and then the whole seat flips up against the side glass here. These ones can also slide forward and backward, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe Derek's lying. Let's try. Yes, they do. Whoa, they do. Oh, man, that is so weird. Okay, so they... Ah... <sighs> <sighs> This week I had three videos. Uh, YouTube said that they are not advertiser friendly because, of, and they totally were. And then this video, I'm almost saying things that were would absolutely not be advertiser friendly. Oh, that is really weird. But you can move it, and it moves like five inches. But there's only two settings. Strange, but uh, useful. Anyways, on to the back. We're at past ten minutes for a minivan video. Okay, so the back, this is with the seats in the far back position. This is how much room that you get. Remember, it is a micro minivan. Toyota has a bigger size one in Japan, which is still smaller than the American version of the, I think it's called Sienna, is the Toyota minivan. They don't have those ones here in Japan because we have smaller cars in Japan. And so, uh, yeah, and then this is cool. There is a lot of space in here. It's like a Japanese bathtub. That's not true, actually. Japanese bathtubs are strangely huge. It's like they have to compensate for something. Like everything in Japan is small, so make the bathtubs three times the size. And bathtubs here are awesome. You set the temperature that you want on the digital gauge, and then it keeps the water in the bathtub at the same temperature so it doesn't go cold. Okay, an easy closer on the trunk. Very good for when you have kids especially when you're very frustrated with the kids and you're just like, why didn't my trunk close? And you're driving around with that light on the dashboard saying the trunk is open and you don't want to stop because there's poop in the pants of one of the kids. And you just want to get home to clean that diaper. Yeah, no more kids for me. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, yeah, check out the comment section if you want to talk about minivans. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you everyone for watching and have a nice day.